so far we talked about the basic idea, how to get a network, how to use a normal way how to like uh, to train the network. But you if you just follow one by one, you gonna find well you can you never we are reproduce state for the state for the results. So if you read the paper, there's se several tiny things mentioned there. Actually, these tiny things matters a lot. Okay. Um, for example, so like um, so this is the model two I just uh, I just open. Um, uh, let me just open the model two here. So this is the models we have. Um, we still, like the x is the throughput, the y is the accuracy. This is for image classification. So you can see every thing like uh, let me do. Well, okay. So this is rest. Uh, let me pick a small one. So this rest net 100. Uh, let, let me this typical one. So rest net 50. This is a typical one we have. So you can see here. This is the thing. The bar here. Actually, this is the accuracy report in the paper. Okay, so then you're adding a bunch of tricks. You can improve the accuracy a lot here. So, um, so this is the adding a bunch of tricks. You can improve the accuracy from almost like 75 plus to 70, like 77, 78. Right? Let me see the exact number, like 77. From 75 to 77, like 2 percent. That means a oral paper in CVPR <laughs> if you improve the network by so much. And so there's a bunch of other things like ResNet. Uh, this ResNet V2. Um, well, this ResNet V1B. Like V1C. V1. Uh, this darknet is not ResNet. V1D. But V1D oh, even much higher. It's like 79 percent top one accuracy. So the baseline model we have almost like 76 kinds of 75 plus report in the paper. So a lot of tricks matters. Actually, this trick is a tiny. It almost give you no overhead, but you actually improve the accuracy a lot. So we will have a lot. Um, briefly introduce something uh, similar thing for mobile net. For example, this mobile net improve a lot. Mobile net, another mobile net improve a lot. Um, Similar thing we have for detections, like for ULO v3. Originally in the paper, ULO v3 is similar to the SSC we have. So uh, this is ULO v3 report in the paper. So almost like tiny bit improved the SSD. Okay, they write the paper about that. But actually, you apply a bunch of tricks, you can improve a great lot here. That's us. a lot of tricks here. So okay. So here we will briefly. Say something about the tricks, but you can see that like there's always new tricks coming out every year. And if you read the paper, there's a lot of tiny space. Color. Yeah, what's my setup? Experiment setup, but even some thing just uh, available in the code. You, you you need to read the source code and find all of the tricks there. It's not even mentioned in the paper. So um, same thing for ULO v3. So we are gonna briefly say some tricks. I think we I think that's pretty useful. The first one is called a mix-up. It's pretty weird data augmentation thing. What they're doing here, every time, I randomly select two examples. The IC example, the JSC example. And then I'm going to sample random numbers, number data, from 0 and 1. What I do here, I will mix these two sample examples together to get a new example. So called x. So what we do here is number data times xi plus one minus number that times xj. We just linear combine these two examples. Similar thing for the labels. We just linear combine them. So we get a new example called x and y. For the training, we only train on these mixed examples. We're going to ignore all these original examples we have. We train the new examples. You can, you can see that, OK, given clock, given a, well, given a class, so this is the image. And for the labels we have, one hot encoding, which is 0, 0, 0, 0 until 1, and all similar thing for the first one. We choose the number that equal to 0 0.9, and I get the new image. Almost like almost the clock, but a little bit, like even hard to see, just little bit glasses here. And the label here 
it's 0 0.1 for the, um, the first, the, the, the glass and the 0 0.9 for the clock. Okay, so this is pretty weird, right? You even get a lot of images not human readable. Similar thing for the object detections, you can do, you can put all this image together, you can put the bonding box together. The only thing here, the object detection is pretty sensitive to the shape. Uh, you, you want to preserve the, sh the input shape. Even you have different ratios, you want to preserve the geometry shapes here. So that um, the ratio is not uh, make messed up here. So this is make two um, bounded box for ship and one for stop sign and merge together, get us three bounded boxes here. Okay, so this is the one tiny trick. Um, the second one is called label smoothing. So we know that we, all, we also use one hot encoding for the label. So here, the Y is just the n-dimensional vector, n is the number of classes, classes we have. If this uh, yi belongs to class i, yi equals to one, all the other things equal to zero. This is one uh, what called one hot encoding of the label. So, and, but we know that we are approximating all this one hot encoding using the softmax. Softmax is pretty hard to, to approach zero or one. Either the input infinity or all the things are zero, you got the zero and the one. But in reality, you could not go so logic numbers. So it's really hard to approach either zero or one. The smoothest labeling give you like, I pick up a epsilon here. For example, I choose epsilon equal to 0 0.1. And then if it's class, I use one minus epsilon. Others, I just, uh, uh, epsilon divided by n plus one, uh, n minus one. So that's still like I can sum them together equals to one, still a probability, but it's kind of not just to go to one. It's the most version. So, so if you choose epsilon equal to zero, one, then it's zero point line for the true classes and the small number less than zero point one for negative classes. So this number, we, have much, we make the softmax much easier to train. This is a pretty standard trick, and not just using on computer vision, also for like uh, NLPs as well. Okay, so label smoothing. The other tricks like, um, well, we mentioned that if you use multi-GPU training, you want to try a very large batch size. Because for good performance, but if you use a large learning rate at the beginning, all this weight are randomly initialized. It's random, and you use a large learning rate, you, you may get numerical issues here. So in this case, we cannot use a large learning rate, but we want to use a large learning rate to, to faster convergence. So what we can do here is called a one, one up. Like, um, what do we do here? We pick up a small learning rate at the beginning and slice and gradually increase to the original learning rate that we have. For example, assume we, we will use the 0 0.1 as the initial learning rate, but that's too large um, at the beginning. What we can do here, we use the first five epochs for warm up. In the first five epochs, I start with the learning rate equal to zero at the beginning. At the end of the five ep epochs, we, we want to increase to 0 0.1 for the learning rate. And the between then, I just linearly increase it until we get the, get the 0 0.1 at the end. So the idea here is that I want to use a tiny learning rate at the beginning so that and when, I, when I train the network, and train the network is moved close to the end, the, the surface is more smooth, I can slightly increase the learning rate. And so I can use the learning rate after five epochs. Okay. Another trick is about the near rate as well. I, well, in typically, it, because we use stochastic, stochastic gradient descent, uh, we didn't cover the theory, but you want to make it convert, you need to decrease the near rate. In the CIFAR 10 uh, homework, you already see that you, you need to decrease the near rate at the end. A typical way for ResNet, what we're doing here, we choose the near rate, initial learning rate equal to 0 0.1, then decrease by 10 times at the 30 epoch, and decrease it by another 10 times at the 16 epoch. 
and another again at 90 epoch. Okay, this is typical way we are doing. But then we need to select, okay, this 30, uh, this 10x, 30, 60, 90, all the things are hyperparameters. You need to choose for your like algorithm. Well, I, if I don't want to choose, what, what I can do is that I can use a cosine function. Like, um, so assume the capital T is, a, um, is the total iterations we have, to total batches we have, and then at a particular iteration T, we can sort of use a cosine function to decay the one from so the first that, um, um, the first the turn, the first two turns is the larger one is zero, is one at the beginning, and um, well, at this pretty small number at the end. Okay, so you can see that the blue line, the dotted blue line is the original one. You first let's start with zero, which is the one up, and the increase to zero point like the, here. Here's zero point what zero point four, at, after five epoch, and then running for like 20, another 25 epoch, decrease by four, 10 times and decrease again at 60 and uh, 90 epoch. But the red one, still uses one up. But uh, at the latter, I can smoothly uh, decreases. And what you can see that, well, the decay is much smooth. First, it's much smooth. Secondly, it's much larger at the beginning. So it's keep very large at the beginning and, and almost close to half of the back end. I can, uh, so you can think about, about like, it's pretty constant at the beginning. Uh, decays very slowly at the beginning, linear at the middle, and slowly at the end. This kind of cosine function we have. But the major benefit here, you don't need to worry about hyperparameters. Uh, just a cosine function, you don't have anything thing to choose. That can make your life easier. But actually, it improves the things a lot. Okay, and another bunch of things, synchronize the batch normalization. Um, so we know that in batch normalization, we need to compute the mean and the variance, for the example, across the whole batch. For example, the batch size is equal to 32, we can uh, compute the mean and the variance using 32 examples. All right, that works well if the batch size is big enough, but if I, the batch size is equal to one, I cannot compute the variance, it's always zero. If the batch size is just equal to two, or like equal to four, that's too small to compute reliable main net variance. That's a big problem. That's not a problem for image classification, but a big problem for detections. For detections, you need to generate so many uncle boxes, it's much more memory. For example, in FastRCN, even a GPU has 16 gigabyte memory, we can only run a single image per, per GPU. Because you have so many uh, anchor boxes, all, all of them eat, eat memories. Well, then the pro we will get a problem because we only got a single image per GPU, and in multi GPU training in the batch long, what we do is like the batch long compute the mean and the variance within each GPU separately. So, because each GPU only has a single image, I cannot compute the variance. So, synchronize the batch long, uh, which means in in the multi-GPU training, I will compute the mean and the variance across whole G the, all these GPUs. So if I have eight GPUs, one image per GPU, then I'm gonna com I, gonna I will compute the mean and the variance for the eight images we have, which means we, we, need, we need to send all the variance between the GPUs when you're computing. That give you like maybe slows down your computation because you need to pay the synchronization cost um, but at the least you get stable uh, batch long as uh, being at the variance here. Okay, so this is synchronized batch normalization, which is all commonly used for detection and um, segmentation. We've, we probably will not cover segmentation, but you can read the book, they have to segment the pixel level information. Well, the, the last one, I, I don't, uh, yeah, the, that's the last one. <laughs> last one is like, every time, because the input image can sort of have different shape. We want, we showed in the image augmentation that we always resize into a same shape. So here, with 20 by 24 width and 20 by 24 height. And, but for image classification, that's fine usually, uh, because the object is so large, always in an image. But for object detections, the object can be large and can be small. 
if you always give you like this size, it may be not good enough because thumb image is very large, thumb image is very small, and you don't want to fix size. The random batch size shape means that for every batch, I first random pick up a, a height and the white, um, height and the width, and then resize all the image to this value. So, um, so here, for example, we can randomly choose a value from 224, like this is 7 times 32, and 256, this is 8 times 32. And another one, like it's, uh, the number is wrong, but it's 9 times 32. So anyone have an idea why we want to have always times 32? The reason why we always want to have 32 because like for ResNet, we know that we have five stage. VGG also have five stage. Every stage, we will have the width and the width. So five stage, every time we do uh, half the string, which means total we have, we reduce by 32x for the width and the height. So if you pick a number, it's like multiply by this number, and so then at the end, we, we will not have so much so many alignment issues. So similar thing for object detection because they use they share the same base network as the image classification. Also, they want to have as like uh, always we reduce by 32 at the end to get a feature map. So that's why we always randomly select numbers by this number. Then, if I pick up a random number, I choose random one from here and resize all the image to this shape. So which means for from batch to batch, I always try images have different size. Okay. Okay, so this is the last one we have. But you know that you, next time, gonna, if you read the paper, you're gonna see a lot of other tricks around. Like so, so many, maybe tens or 20 tricks all over the round. So here we show some small results, like um, how the things ma matter to other things. So first is image classification. And we choose the ResNet, this already modified ResNet. And Inception v3 and the mobile net. Um, uh, we talked about inception, um, but we didn't talk about mobile net. Efficient is a baseline. We will always improve the, the state of art result on the paper. Then adding cosine decay, like this one top one accuracy on image net. Like adding cosine decay give you like for rest net 0.75 at percent accuracy. Adding another label smoothing 0.04, and the mix up actually give you a lot of things here, 0.84, so for less than that. In total, so that's why we can improve the baseline from 77% to 79. Similar thing for, than, for Inception, we can get like a lot of uh, improvement as well. Uh, for Inception, V3, the so cosine decay improves a lot. And for mobile net, uh, also the cosine decay improves a lot. The interesting thing here, you can stack all the tricks together. You can stack one by one, and you can maybe stack, here we have three, you can stack another like seven. Maybe you can further improve it. The other thing for ULO V3, um, here, um, MAP is the bounding box like uh, accuracy we have. Um, so baseline is here, baseline is 80. If we remove all data augmentations, uh, um, well, we get we, we get a lot of uh, we decrease the accuracy a lot, and then we look at synchronous batch long, give it 0.56, and randomized training shape, give it not 0.4, cosine learning rate decay 0.4 always with one up, and also label smoothing 0.4, and mix up again give a lot of thing here 1.5 here, in total we can give 3.4. Uh, for Euro V3. Okay, that's why you can see a huge jump from the original paper into the uh, state part results we have. Okay, so that's basically a bunch of training tricks. Like, um, usually we don't talk about that. Like, uh, it's not, you, you never know why it works or not. And also, the other thing change. Um, but we have, like, find something kind of 
uniformly works well for all these applications we have. But next time, if you read the papers and read the, read the other guy's source code, you want to pay attention to this matrix. Even that, this like uh, tiny things can give a lot of uh, improvement here. Okay. Any questions?